All right, and welcome back to Turdford Show. All right, today's video is actually, it's really not so much physics, it's really about this concept of the differential equation and how do you know when you're going to be using this differential equation in terms of your physics class. So this problem, really there's not a lot of physics going on because it's already given us an equation. It's already gave us this equation and it says when a marble enters a fluid, its acceleration is proportional to some constant alpha v square. And then it even goes on to give us alpha. And it even tells us how fast the marble is going when it enters the fluid. And that number, that is some vo. But now catch this. Look at what it actually asks. How long does it take before the marble reaches half its initial speed? So we're looking for we're looking for the time it takes for the velocity of this marble to reach. That's supposed to be an at sign. It's just very ugly. To reach half its initial speed. So doing this problem is actually like really, really easy. The physics is already over. This is nothing but straight up calculus question. So then it becomes, well, how do we do this problem? How do we know when we can kind of start thinking about, hey, can I use a differential equation in this problem? And it's simple. If you're ever looking at a problem, and let's just say you see some blah, blah, blah garbage, but let's just say you saw in the problem, you saw an X and a V in that problem. Could I potentially do a differential equation in this problem? Yeah, I could. Reason why, what is velocity? Velocity is, the velocity is the derivative of position. So that tells me I could do a differential in this problem. So let's go back to what we're looking at over here. And so what tells me we can do a differential equation in this problem? Well, quite simply, what is the derivative of velocity? The derivative of velocity is acceleration. So that tells me it's game on. But now you may be wondering yet again, it's like, okay, but why are you wanting to do a differential in this problem? Well, look at what it asks for. It asks for time, but the equation we're given doesn't even have time in it. So the only way we can get time in it is to think, well, what is the definition of acceleration? Acceleration is a derivative of velocity with respect to time. So now relook at this problem, and now we can actually do a little calculus on this problem, and we can actually set an equation for time with velocity initial in it, with this VO in it. So here's what I'm going to do. First off, I'm going to times both sides by this dt variable, and I've got dv equals alpha v square dt. And so here's the thing. Simply, all I'm going to do is integrate both sides of this equation. That's it. I've got it ready that I can integrate. There's just one problem. I've got a variable v square. I cannot integrate that versus this dt over here. So I need the v square over here. Now your question may be, well, what about the alpha? Well, the truth is, the alpha is a constant. It can stay on either side. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to divide both sides by the alpha, though. So let's rewrite this equation. What have we got? The alpha v squares, they're gone. So now we've got 1 over alpha v square dv. And we can integrate this because we got v square dv. And that's equal to dt on the other side. So now what our goal is going to be is we're going to actually integrate both sides of this equation. Now, what are we going to integrate from? Well, we're going to integrate our time from some time zero to a time t. The velocity, we're going to integrate it from some initial velocity, random mark there, to a point that it said when the velocity is one half its initial value. So your happy calculus teacher would probably be good to go right now because we've got this thing pretty well ready. So now let's go ahead and start doing the integration on this. Well, I'm going to do some. I'm going to rewrite this just a little. This v squared, think about if you were in math class and you had 1 over 
let's go back. Basic math class. You know, if you think about it, how would you do the derivative of that? Well, you could pull the 2 out. It's a constant. And you wouldn't want to take of x squared. You would take, there, you would integrate like this. So the same thing. It's just now we've got real numbers and real variables. So we're going to pull the alpha out. So we've got 1 over alpha integrated from VO to VO over 2. And instead of 1 over V squared, I'm going to write V negative 2 dV. And then we've got also another side. I'm making this really good for all the little math teachers out there who would be offended if I left off anything. And so here's our problem, and we're ready to integrate. So if we want to integrate this side over here, think about what you do. Well, we can go back to this other thing. What do you do to x negative 2? x negative 2, you add 1, which is negative 1, and then you divide by it. So that's exactly what we're going to do over here. We're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to add 1 and divide by it. Well, what's that become? Well, that becomes 1 over v negative. Because think about what we got. We got negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, which v negative 1 means it's 1 over v. But we got also divide by that negative 1, which makes that negative. So that's still, don't forget your constant. And we've got to evaluate this side now. Don't forget that. So we're going to evaluate that from V0 to V0 over 2. And then on the other side, well, integrate this, just dt. Well, that's just t. But we've still got to evaluate that. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to t. I wonder if this is where I can say that the calculus is over. I don't know. We've, we've done some good stuff here. So check out what we got. So remember, how do you evaluate if your mind's kind of slipping right now? You evaluate by looking and you take your final and subtract your initial. So look at what we've got. We've got negative 1 over this V term minus negative 1 over some V term. So in the case of what we're actually doing here, what's our, what's our final V term? It's V over 2, V over 2. So we've got this negative 1, V over 2, minus negative 1 over V O. Well, minus negative is plus 1 over V O. All that, don't forget that alpha that's out there. That alpha just keeps getting slanted more and more, doesn't it? That equals, now let's evaluate the other side. The other side would be some final value t minus some initial value 0. Just finish the math on this problem. It's, it's all downhill. Just do your algebra at this point. Because take a look at what you've got here. You've got negative 2 over vo plus 1 over vo. Well, What's that become when you do that? Well, that's going to become negative 1 over VO times 1 over alpha. Give me a little page extension, please. So we've got negative 1 over alpha VO equal to T. And now if you want to make the uh, problem happy, you could go back and they actually gave you some numbers in this one that you could plug in. Again, if you're watching this video, you better be able to plug in numbers into the problem. So the good part, the fun part, is actually over. And so I guess at this point, all I can say is, uh, Al Vida Zane. Uh, mm, uh, goodbye, goodbye to you and you and you. Sorry, watch Sound of Music last night. Anyway, later dudes. Bye.